Hello everyone! The clip you're about to hear is from one of our exclusive Patreon episodes on a recent horror release, and just like all of our other episodes, it might include major spoilers for said horror release, so don't listen to it if you haven't already seen it. You've officially been warned. And if you'd like to hear the full episode, just head on over to patreon.com slash horrorqueers and subscribe today. Without further ado, here is your exclusive Patreon clip. They've only recently moved into this condo, so they're doing a little bit of housewarming. And we've got Brianna's gay brother, Troy, who is played by Nathan Stewart Jarrett, who I've seen a lot of people refer to as annoying. And I'm like, oh, you just don't know gay people. Wait, like the, the, him as a person or the or the character? The or... character, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> come on, y'all. Um, no, I don't think he, he also doesn't have enough screen time, really, for me to for him to make an impression of being annoying. Well, it's weird because he and his boyfriend, Grady, who is played by Kyle Kaminsky, they they kind of show up a couple of times early on, and then they basically just disappear, and we never yeah. see them again. Yeah, that's, I mean, granted, I know, I get it. They are not the center of this story, but it does kind of seem like this, the movie just forgets about them. And I'm not going to complain about having, like, an interracial queer couple, like, in this major studio release, like, sure. yay, yay, yay. Yeah. But yeah, like, they're, they're honestly, like... It feels like Troy is only there to deliver exposition. Yeah. Well, for exposition and to say and to save Brianna whenever she's like stressing out about about Anthony. Right. Yeah. The boyfriend. I mean, they kind of have a little bit of a, like a it's not even a real, a real conversation, but like the white boyfriend says something about black culture or something and they kind of like check him or whatever. Or like he yes. says, OK, if I say this, mm -hmm. which again, I think that's really interesting because I, I think that's like cool to see. But it's just like, that's it, you know? Yeah, it felt like a great kind of real moment where you're just like, I'm sort of involved in this, but I'm also on the outside looking in because, again, if you're not black, like, there are just certain things that you're not going to say that you're not going to know, and you're constantly negotiating that process. But well, yeah, it's and just, it's the kind of thing you wish that there was maybe just a little more of. Yeah, and so that's something, I'll pull one of um, Angelica Jade's quotes because this is something that... I didn't get because I'm, again, I'm a white person watching a black film, but like, I get it in the sense of like, if I'm a queer person watching a queer film that does this, but her quote was, you know, the, the, I, Troy delivers a line that says, you know, they love what they make, but not us. And Angelica goes on to say, such lines are not only dry as hell, they're a tell. The film can't run from the fact that it was created with a white audience in mind, full of explanations and blunt language for things black people already understand on a molecular level. Yeah. And I can't really speak much to that, except at least from a queer standpoint, I can see how that would bother me. Like, I'm trying to think of a show, and this is, like, not really our audience base, but look at something like The Other Two, Joe, you know, which you and I both watch, but how that kind of handles and talks about queer life without, at least in my opinion, not without, like, hand-holding straight audiences through it. Mm -hmm. I guess I can see how some black people would think that this movie is doing that for us. Right. Yeah. And, and it's hard, right? Because I did feel like there were a couple of times like this where you think, okay, yeah, you know, you are tipping your hat, you're making it a little bit obvious, you are kind of saying the right. quiet part out loud. And I guess for me, it just it didn't bother me that much. Yeah. But then I think, okay, well, if this is for me, then maybe I'm not meant to be bothered because I'm meant to be educated, like Angelica Jade Bastian says. Right. And so for me, you know, like, let's say like, you know, there was a queer horror film that came out, a subtle queer horror film that came out 30 years ago, and we're getting a legacy sequel to it. I'm probably not going to want this legacy sequel to ho handhold people and walk them through and explain things like I, it's like, hey, this is a movie that we're finally reclaiming as a, as, as a minority group. Mm -hmm. Why are you talking to me like this? You know? Yeah, I recently reviewed a film that was by two queer women. It's a Canadian horror film called The Retreat. And it's basically a queer women go to an Airbnb that has actually been put up as a front to attract queer people so that homophobic right wing people can then brutalize them on a pay per view feed. Mm -hmm. And I remember being really frustrated with that film in particular because it is doing some of that kind of stuff where it's like, oh, but wouldn't it be horrible if there were people who didn't like you because you were queer? And I'm like, yeah, is that all you got? <laughs> so, you know what? I, I maybe agree with that then. Like, this would be very frustrating because I've seen it and it is frustrating. Yeah, and that's all I'm saying. Like, I'm with you. It, it, didn't, it didn't bother me, but that's because, like... I 
I, I'm not in the other position, right? So right. I'm trying to be like, okay, well, as a queer person, like, what what if it was flipped? And what if this was a queer thing? Like, what if we had queer man in 1992 and we get now queer man again in like 2021 and it does something like this right so again it didn't bother me but i i I understand that issue taken with it hello i'm shelby scott the host of scare you to sleep a podcast where i tell you spooky bedtime stories full of creepy sound effects and music that is soothing yet unsettling to help immerse you into a world of horror this is a show for those of us who have realized horror can be a strange but relaxing escape from reality speaking of escapes sometimes i lead you through guided nightmares like a guided meditation but instead of flowery meadows I take you on a journey through your own personal nightmare. So come get lost in the terror with me. Listen to Scare You to Sleep wherever you listen to podcasts or find us online at bloody.fm. Sweet screams. <laughs> 